All right, welcome back. Uh, we are now talking insecurity. The Abuja Kaduna Highway is in the news yet again. The bandits have attacked commuters along the Abuja Kaduna Highway and abducted an unspecified number of travelers. The spokesman of the Kaduna Police Command, Mohammed Jaligay, said the bandits had about 4:20 uh, p.m. blocked the outdoor bay portion of the highway near Kateri village. He said they intercepted some vehicles and during the process took some persons away to an unknown destination. Now, Jaligay said the prompt response and arrival of security operatives attached to the highway prevented the terrorists from abducting more travelers. The spokesman explained that security operatives engaged the criminals in a gun duel and successfully repelled them from further attacks. According to him, normalcy was immediately returned to the highway following the clearance operation. Uh, enabling motorists to continue their journey. We have security experts, uh, Yahuza Getsu, joining us um, right now. Good morning to you, Yahuza. Thanks for staying with us. Good morning, listeners. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, team. All right, uh, Yahuza, we've talked um, so much uh, concerning Abuja Katuna Highway. Uh, one would have thought that by now um, measures would have been put in place to forestall uh, these uh, you know, attacks to just continue unabated. Although the police uh, operatives were saying that they've been, they were able to you know, put the situation under control in a short time. But how do you, uh, you, know, how do you re uh, react to all of that? Well, um, I want to tell you and the listeners and our viewers that <clears throat> it is the inability of the government to take the resp its resp constitutional responsibility. That is why this attack happened. That is one. And secondly, it is a message to federal government and the uh, uh, Nigeria Railway Corporation and Ministry of uh, Transport. <sighs> And third, it's a message to Nigerians that describe and explain more that Buhari administration is never a serious government, is never a committed government, and is never ready to fulfill any of its promises in respect to securing this nation and making this nation and delivering this nation to the next level from where it was. It is very clear that this, the conduct of these bandits is a negligence, is as a result of negligence from the government and security agencies. Government keep telling lies. Buhari administration keep deceiving Nigerians. Security operatives haven't been able to do their job. From the time when the Kaduna Abuja train was attacked, about 50 to 55 or 60 days ago, I have been flying the Kaduna Abuja road at a different intervals of early hours in the morning, early, early morning, and um, uh, afternoon time, uh, light afternoon, early hours of the evening, evening, early hours of the night, and even in the midnight. And I have been driving myself, and I have never seen anything that, you can, that can build your confidence and trust that you are safe and secured as you move. So it is just because we cannot neglect our parents who are at the far end of where we are. Because, for example, I based in Abuja, and my parents based in one remote area of Kano State. So I have no alternative. I have to go and visit my aged, sick mother and also my relatives. So likewise, all other people from Sokoto, Katana, Zamfara, Kebi, uh, 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 Bauchi, uh, Taraba, Yobe, Adamawa, and alike, which have a connection with Kaduna. Because Kaduna is a political, political and administrative city of northern Nigeria. More or less, it has a direct connection to south, south, southeast, north central, and southwest. So for that, this is an effort to cripple the economic activity of northern region, to cripple the political activity of northern region, to cripple the social and psychological well-being of northern region. 
And it means that it is a calculated attempt. And it is given a clear instrument and a description that someone somewhere else is behind what is happening. Lai Mohammed, the spokesperson of the federal, gov federal government under Buhari's watch, as well as the Minister of Information, had made mention many times, among other principal officers of Buhari administration, that we know who are the finances of these bandits. We know where they are. But yet, in the last six years to seven years, they have not done anything to do with, deal with them. So this exhibit and explain that Buhari administration is never a serious administration. And it has exposed their weaknesses and inability to deliver their mandate, their constitutional mandate. All right, um, Yahoo. In fact, all they are responsible. Yahoo's the government is supposed to have resigned because oh, oh. It's, it, of its inability to perform. They have felt woefully. And we have provided a preliminary information to intelligence and government at all level about this bandit. And I have made mention, I am from northern Nigeria, and I said all the northern elite knows the location of this bandit. I know the locations of these bandits. All the security agencies, the divisional police officers of the respective local government, and the traditional authorities of the respective communities and respective emirates in northern Nigeria, they all know these bandits and they know where they are. And all the security personnel, they know these bandits and they know their location. Nasser Ahmed Erufai have testified to the statement I have been making in the last six, seven years. Yeah, I challenge the Buhari administration yeah, and I challenge the security Yeah, yeah who's a get so? Yes, please. Following the thoughts of your conversation, if you say that um, everybody knows the situation of, I mean, the location of this bandit and this criminal element, terrorist, whatever it is, you tag them. But you also want to agree with me that the Nigerian police force is mandated to protect people's lives, properties, and also dictate and investigate crime and prosecute offenders. So in all of this that's going on, where is the place of the Nigerian police? Where's the Nigerian police? Uh, that, 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 that is why I told you we have a weak government. No, no, we but don't have how, a how do you system. blame that? Yeah, also get, so before you get into it, how do we blame that on the government? The police is actually you know, an agency of government. It's a creation. Okay, it, 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 it is because of six reasons. One, we don't have adequate and enough personnel to face the security challenges bedeviling the northwestern region alone. If you put together all the security personnel we have, we don't have capable hands and adequate number to deal with only northwestern region, the security issues in northwestern region. That is one. Two, they have not been modernized and have the, to, to have the capacity so that they can face the challenges based on you, you, you using the mod, modern techniques. And three, there is no enough gadget and equipment, arm and ammunition, that they can be able to face these cowards, bandits, and terrorists, and whatsoever they are. And four, inability of the government to deal with those who were found wanting so that can serve as a deterrence to others, especially within the security cycle. And five, inability of the government to manage resources wisely. Government of Buhari administration has squandered millions and billions and trillions of US dollars that borrowed in the name of dealing with the security, but we have not seen any impact. Since independence, since Nigeria's independence, where I commend Buhari administration, there was never a government that imputed highest and huge amount of resources in terms of money, in terms of uh, 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 deceiving Nigerians that they have purchased equipment uh, uh, to Kano and others in the name of providing security for lives and property. But yet, there is no justification to that. We only have that on paper that equipment have been procured. If at all you procure this equipment, why can't you provide it and 
engage youth between the age of 17 and 22, at least per polling unit. So at least 40 per polling unit. In a political world where you have 10 polling units, you will have 400 youth engaged. In a local government where you have uh, 10 political wards, you will have 4,000 youth between the age of 22 that can be trained and engaged so that we can use the way f other way around, that is a, a community-driven uh, security process, or else for them to be engaged uh, into and distributed among the security personnel so that you improve the number and then build the capacity, their capacity using modern techniques. So if I and six, which is final, inability of the government to deal with corruption. Because corruption is an institution in Nigeria that has been provided required environment to improve and escalate beyond the reasonable doubt, beyond the thinking of any Nigerian or any other person outside Nigeria, so that can be uh, managed. Buhari administration have deceived people, deceived Nigerians, that they were going to do something in managing the crisis bedeviling the nation, especially in respect to corruption. No, but, but, so sad, no, but those who have been confirmed by court of law, those who have been prosecuted and arrested by EFCC, huge amount of money was used in the process of investigation, in the process of uh, prosecution, in the process of whatever. But yet, Buhari administration went ahead and forgive them and release them from the prison. This is a slap to Nigerians and a discouraging attitude to the personnel of ICPC and EFCC among other institutions that are fighting corruption. But, but, but you also get so. I mean, we can't constantly always, you know, heap the blame on the president. As much as I'm not the presidential spokesperson or holding brief for the president, we have institutions we have. that we have, have been created. That. Why? Because why, we, why, why we have these institutions? Why are the these institutions and their mandates are very clear? So why are these institutions not living up to expectation? We can't constantly shift the blame on the president. If if if, if at all they are not doing up to, up to expectation, who appointed them? I mean, this when is you hire these, a these criminal institutions in your house, and these let me agencies. Ask you a simple question. These institutions are created. When, these when agencies a community, are created. When, when one of the members of, of the community broken. Uh, into a, a house of another neighborhood. And the neighborhood shouted, thief, thief, thief. And the community members followed him. And you bring, you put him in your house and you say, please, don't just go your way. And next thief, you also bring him into your house. You created, your house became the, the, the cycle where thieves and uh, uh, people who siphon the resources are hiding. Anybody who jump from other party to APC, who have a case with EFCC, is being silenced by the government attitude. So Nigerians have lost confidence on the government. So those institutions are being, let me tell you, let me take you back to, to the statement credited to the National Security Advisor at the time, whereby he made mention that trillions and billions of money have been allocated this was mentioned through the BBC Hausa. The money was allocated, huge amount of money was allocated as stated by the National Security Advisor in the name of purchase and procurement of soft and hard arms and building the capacity of our security. But yet, he is a supervisor of all the security agencies in Nigeria and the Chief Intelligence Officer made mention very clear that I don't know, I don't see the arms, I don't know how the money was spent. So then who will tell you? And I want to tell you, take you back also to the instructions given by the president. Even recently he made mention that he asked the military, after the attack of the Kaduna Abuja train, go and deal with, ruthlessly, go and deal with bandits wherever they are. So why are they remanifesting? In fact, all the military and other security agencies are taking the instruction from the president. So if they are not taking your instruction, why can't you send them away?
and bring the right people. All right, Yahuza. That is why we are putting the blame on the president. Yahuza. Not Yahuza. because of any personal bandata or any other personal reason. All right, Yahuza. But because of in his inability to build our confidence and to keep to the promises that he keep with him. Yahuza. 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 If I could just as get well a word in other reasons. All right, uh, your points have been noted uh, in as much as, uh, you know, you feel um, the bulk of the blame should be, uh, you know, passed to the presidency. But right now, let's talk about the ways forward. Right now, these bandits have um, uh, shown themselves to be more like a dead devil. They, they are not really bothered about, uh, you know, what uh, the government is doing or what uh, measures have been put in place or not put in place. Lives have been um, lost, uh, you know, over time on, along that road. Uh, uh, people have been kidnapped. From what we were told, uh, eyewitnesses said um, the security operators only came after uh, the bandits have left. So what do we do now? What is the way forward? Because from what we understand, the real, uh, the Abuja Kadunarian, which is an alternative, is also prone to attack. And the NRC, they're telling us that uh, they are set for reopening sometime next week. Now, where do we draw the line? Where do, how do we ensure that um, you know, these passengers uh, who would want to move from Abuja to Kaduna via the train or uh, through the road networks are actually safe? We, we should have a sincerity from the government and the security agencies. We should have a commitment, a true commitment, not a deceitful commitment, to deal with the situation. We should have presence of security personnel 247, at least between every five kilometers. 247, we should have that. We should have intelligence equipment, monit monitoring equipment that can be tracking at least every 15 minutes what is going on and also to have a communication between uh, uh, stations of the train and also between one community of the NURTW and the other, the NURTW, the NATO, who are the road transport workers, the Nupeng and others, uh, those who are transporting the Trailer Workers Association, among other associations, must have a collaboration and partnership and to have a communication procedure to be managed and also supervised and monitor by the security agencies between Kaduna, Kateri, uh, Rijana, Gidambusa, Audubanja, uh, 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 Jere, and um, uh, um, uh, Tapa, as well as um, Sabongusi and um, uh, uh, Dipko Junction. So there are 11 communities, as well as Akilubu and Gadamala Mama. So these 11 communities, must be given adequate attention and must have the presence of unknown intelligence who will monitor and track who are really the informers and who are really the criminals hiding within these communities. Because I want to tell you that in all these 11 communities I have listed, there are terrible informants, there are armed traders, there are uh, uh, bandits are there, there are also other criminals who are providing support, moral and psychological support for the activities of the bandits. And among them, there are inputs, direct input from the traditional authorities, which must be checked. So if at all government is ready, these items must be provided for us to move forward. Otherwise, I want to tell you that worse than Kaduna, I was an attack that happened 50 to 55 days ago for Kaduna Abuja train, and worse than the attack that happened recently on the Kaduna Abuja road day before yesterday, worse than that will happen. Because these bandits are rearming themselves every now and then. So, Yahuza yeah, Getso, so. yeah, yeah, so. you, you are a uh, security uh, uh, expert. Equipment than what is... Yahuza yeah, Getso, so. you are a security expert, and it's interesting to know that you have all of this information. Uh, at your fingertips, but it feels like maybe the government is not in the know or uh, a lot of people, I mean, those who should take responsibility are not in the know. Now, it should be worrisome that shortly after the government had announced that um, there would be resumption of train services in the same uh, route, 
the Abuja Kaduna, and then you also have the attack on the roads. It, it should be very worrisome uh, that this is actually happening because it feels like it's more like a dare. You, you dare the government to do whatever. Well, you have, you have mentioned a lot of issues. You have talked about um, personnel lacking intelligence. Is it about just the intelligence or the problem with the constant attack of the bandits, the fact that the bandits seem to be having a plus and having a hand, um, seem to be making progress. It should be premised on the fact that, you know, no one is prosecuting. How, how, how many times have we had that anyone has been arrested? So is, is it majorly an issue of bandits, I mean, the lack of intelligence? In security in the uh, in securing a certain community or location or it's the issue of having um, the, the willpower the, having the police effective to dictate arrest and prosecute these persons I want to tell you that uh, both as you mentioned are also factors and I believe that if our intelligence is using the information that I have been providing in the last six, seven to 12 years, free of charge. Just go to the Google. Let's assume that the security agencies should go to the Google and type my name, Dr. Ehuza Gesso. The intelligence, the free intelligence I provided, the information available in my name, from the writings and interviews I had, as well as interactions with the community and other things. It's enough, to, if it can be utilized, 50% of it is enough to deal with this security situation squarely within 16 months. I have mentioned, and I'm repeating myself, I know all the locations of the bandits. And I have mentioned, all the areas in northern Nigeria, they all, in northwestern Nigeria and north central Nigeria, they all know the locations of these bandits. And all the divisional police officers and the local security officers who are the representative of the DSS of the local government. And the in charges of the immigration in the respective 773 local governments that we have in Nigeria, as well as the civil defense command, commanders of the uh, local government commanders. They all know where these bandits are in North Central and Northwest, as well as any other part where criminals are operating. So it is just absence of political and administrative will. If at all we can have, I, I, I want to tell you that all the, uh, the, the, the security agencies are hearing me. And I want you to rebroadcast this information. You can even share it with other a media outlet to share it, that I said there is no level of security, highest level of authority of security agencies, defense intelligence agency, directors of military intelligence, the NIA, the DSS, the Air Force, the Army, there is the Navy, there is no highest level of authority that I have not reached one-on-one, -on -one, eyeball to eyeball, and provided them the same information I'm discussing now on air. Yehuza, thank so what you matters so much. to them? I right. have put it in writing. All right, Yehuza, uh, thank you so much for the thoughts that we have shared. That that is much as we can actually take on this particular discourse. Yehuza gets a, he's a security consultant, and he joined us to look at um, uh, the attacks of um, commuters along the Abuja Kaduna Highway. We'll take a quick break and the breakfast returns. This time around, we'll be talking about uh, how you can actually study in the UK. In a moment, stay with us.